good afternoon and welcome back i hope things are well i hope you're enjoying this gorgeous day in the castle and i want to start this video off by actually talking about the big one tonight the champions league final Borussia Dortmund versus Real Madrid at Wembley and the reason why I just brought up those two teams because well we already know this season just how good Dortmund actually are and I remember still when Dortmund actually won the semi-final against PSG straight away came out the press conference and Ed Intelic the Dortmund manager actually just spoke to great lengths about the Castanet and he was saying straight away once we beat Newcastle, we believed we could have done anything. And that's the mentality their teams had, they've been able to get themselves into the final. I just thought that was such a great compliment towards us. And despite the fact we went all the way out in the group stage, still got spoken quite highly of as far as the final and the competition. So it's a great accomplishment of where we've been now as a football club. And I just wanted to say best of luck to Dortmund. Hope they do it. Hope they do it. I want to see the underdogs come out on top and even though they are the underdogs especially against a team like Real Madrid that is chasing 15 Champions League it's still a good team Dortmund you can't mess around with them uh, we learned the hard way and I think tonight we could potentially see it happen so best of luck to them and I want to just remind the Castle fans where we are now as a football club because unfortunately you've seen it in a tight one from Neil and I don't want to be that guy, but I've been banging on all week long about this potentially happening. And now, according to Fabrizio Romano, in an exclusive article, it's going to happen. Tosin Adebayo has chosen Chelsea over Newcastle, over Manchester United. He has turned down our options. In his case, he's got himself a much bigger contract at Chelsea. So he's probably used Newcastle, along with his agent, actually used Newcastle to basically get himself a more luxurious deal at Chelsea's going to get more money now you got to think about his point of view because I've seen a lot of Newcastle fans straight away blame Amanda blame Murder just basically blaming our football club for not getting this deal done now you got to look at it in this guy's point of view he plays for Fulham Chelsea geographically is literally next to Fulham so the guy doesn't have to move house he can stay in London his family can stay exactly where they are now he's joined the team that is in European football I, I said it um Although Conference League over no European football is not, not a massive jump, European football is a factor. If you don't have European football, we will miss out on some targets. Now, that's the reality. That's the the consequences we had to accept from the fact that Manchester United won the FA Cup final. We didn't get ourselves top six football. We have to understand that some things will go out of our way now because we don't have European football. I don't think it's going to be a major factor. But in this case, it has been a bit of a pole power and it's just been the decider that basically stopped us getting a free a free agent. In this case, Tosin Adebayo. We still are getting Lloyd Kelly. I want to make that nice and clear now. There's no issue with Lloyd Kelly. He'll be coming into the football club. Of course, we are just waiting for the actual window to open, which I believe is June the 14th. I think it'll be a, an exact date. So once the transfer window opens, we can sign Lloyd Kelly straight away. He'll come in, he'll get announced, everything will be sorted with him. And in terms of Tosin Adebayo, it now took a bit of a bad turn. He's going to go to Chelsea. Chelsea's a good move for him. I can't exactly blame the player for A, using Newcastle somewhat to get himself a better deal. And B, again, you're already in Fulham. Why we did not go to Chelsea? Like, it's such an obvious move for the player to make. Um, it is what it is. We've got to accept it now. But the big question for me being is, what is next? Who is next? Because I think Newcastle's probably banked on Tossin being our centre-half sign and Lloyd Kelly being, even though he is more of a central player, probably banked on him being a, being a left-back cover slash centre-half starter. So we have kind of banked on him being more towards a left-hand side player rather than uh, Lloyd Kelly being the centre-half sign. But that's the that's the great deal of getting a player in that is versatile now. You can just all of a sudden, Lloyd Kelly, there he is, the centre-half sign. But Obviously, Newcastle will be looking for his second defender, hence why we were trying to get Tossin in the first place. So, puts us in a bit of a tricky situation because who could we get? Who we're going to go for next? But that brings me on to the next part of the video now. A player who has actually came onto Newcastle United's radar is Brian M. Bembo from Brentford. And when you look at the guy's stats, good player, isn't he? I, I like that. He's got goals, he's got assists, he's got everything about him, which for me, I scream for, and that right hand side, we're lacking it so much. So to actually see a guy that has consistently done that in the Premier League is good. And for Brentford as well, a team that is quite attacking, don't get me wrong, but 
haven't got an overly great squad. Obviously, we've had that Tony Barn. It's damaged him somewhat. He's came back. They still haven't lit the world on fire. So, so young Ben will get those sort of stats for a team that you probably wouldn't expect him to get those sort of stats for. He's good. And I feel like for Newcastle, still got a few targets out there. Obviously, we've looked into the legs. So, Pedro Neto, who I don't rate really at all, look into the legs. So, Elisa, who excites me quite a lot. But obviously, he's going to be quite high in demand. So, Mbembo seems to be kind of in the middle. Um, obviously, probably not quite as good as Elise, but his stats are there to prove that he is a good player. He's a player that's probably not going to be on the radar for too many teams. So, the Castle won't face quite stiff competition where, again, you have that potential possibility of a European team in the Premier League uh, challenging with us. So, for players' point of view, they probably aren't going to choose us over the other team. So, we're in a position now where Mbembo is the sort of player that you won't get massive demand for price wise um no one brentford they probably will charge an extreme amount of money but if newcastle are able to work out a deal i think it's a good signing you can't say no one can you so uh definitely one you want to keep an eye on we'll see how things will like at least say turn out because again he's gonna have such demand for him as a player so i think once newcastle get either in there for at least say or they don't bother at all then i think on the probably will go for and judging by those stats, as I said before, I, I couldn't tell you much about the guy in all honesty. I hadn't had a chance to watch Brentford much. Obviously, I, I was in hospital for uh, the last game of the season, so I didn't even see how uh, they played against us. But he's a player that I'm keen on uh, for what I have seen of him and someone that fits the castle's bill. And again, I've been banging on about this right-hand sided player. He's exactly the sort of player that I want. So for me, it was a feasible deal. Definitely one that I think we should go in for. Before we talk about some more breaking news with Newcastle, I just want to quickly dedicate a segment in this video to the two recently departed free agents now, that being Matt Ritchie and Paul Dummett. Both long-serving players, Ritchie here since 2016, Paul Dummett here since the year 2000. He was here before I was born, as mental as that sounds. So yeah, both of their careers in Newcastle are now over and both of them have said quite good messages Newcastle fans so I want to put them both on the screen now Paul Dummett has about six different pages so you might have to check his social media pages yourself but I just wanted to say obviously massive uh, congratulations to both of them had a great career at Newcastle and I don't want to be that guy but that's one of the positives that will take them not getting European football because it, it's now got no restrictions on us so being able to release these players without needing to keep them for your way for guidelines so as much as Obviously, it's quite sad to see them go and see these messages online. The truth is, we've got to move on. We've got to start clearing out. And for these two, uh, they've probably been here too long. Uh, I feel like the right time has been a couple of years ago, but now finally clear them off the books. And the positive from that being is that from our release players, here's a mad stat for you. We've actually saved £130,000 wages every week. So when you factor in across the entire year, you're talking five six million pounds per year and that's just of those five players who well none of them were doing anything really they were just sitting on the bench so they get that money off now and now opens up the wage bill city so castle can either extend some contracts or they can bring new players in and not need to factor in any ffp because we've just cleared all those wages out so that, that's a great positive for us just getting hendrick carriers richie dummer and kill watts all off the books so uh, best to look to a lot of them, but it is the right time. And finally, I want to talk about Newcastle in a commercial sense because they're making big moves yet again. They've now appointed Brad Miller as the Chief Operating Officer of this football club. Now, if you look into this guy's background, he was manager and helping a £1.6 billion transformation of Manchester Airport. He's been the, the lead manager in London Stansted Airport. I mean, this guy's got a crazy background. He's got such a high level of development in his life where he's been able to lead massive projects and now we've got him at Newcastle United so he's part alongside Downey O so these individuals are going to be the ones that are going to be getting this club up there in terms of revenue and we've already seen it even yesterday I went and watched the Lionesses play at St James's Park even in that case obviously match day revenue will go towards Newcastle I would have thought the FA will pay some fees towards Newcastle if not he had the ITV4 which had the game on so that would have been some money towards the football club. We've got the men playing on Monday. We've got the new club shop that's now available. So on Friday, June the 7th, go to the club shop straight away and buy a new shirt. We've got all these different sh 
revenue is coming in and it's going to continue to happen expect unfortunately in a fan point of view expect we've already seen the season ticket prices go up new memberships are probably going to be applied to everyone now there's going to be all sorts of new things where the club is going to look at every single minuscule detail and how they can make money and that's going to benefit Newcastle long term because all of these minimal fees that they'll be making everywhere is going to help with the one big fee which is going to shoot them straight up and that's where Newcastle has to be now when you're only able to expand in Jim's Park at the minute unfortunately the truth is you're going to have to bump the prices up because that's how Newcastle's going to make the money so the club is just going to basically rinse as much money out of us as possible and that's going to help them get to where they want to be but our oh, great in a technical point of view the greater point these staff members in and because they are good these people are going to be what eventually wins the silverware what eventually gets us into consistent and regular European football and already in such a short span of well I mean two and a half years now the castle has done so much and they will continue to do so much and we as football fans three years ago if you asked us the question would you be happy paying more money to go to the games if you know you got the pay yeah and you got all this financial backing behind us you you'd say yes every day of the week wouldn't you sir even though some fans might be a bit disappointed now with obviously prices going up and having to pay money, more money, I think it's I think it's some of that fans, again, if you said that when Mike Ash is around, they would have just snapped your hand off at it. So we've got to accept how things are and listen, we'll, we'll see how this summer window goes. I'm excited for it, I'm buzzing for it. Obviously, it's been a bit of a bit of a downer, not getting tossed out of bio, but it was a move that I didn't see happening anyway. So I wanted to make that important to you guys across the week. So... Once this big review came out that Chelsea are closing in on them, it didn't feel like much of a shock because they've been prepared for it and we've understood that uh, for this player an individual point of view, he probably has better moves out there that will suit him more. So it is what it is. I don't think we can bash the club for this one. I think the, cl the player clearly wanted to move like Chelsea. It wasn't the case that Newcastle had it nailed on and then at the last minute they've lost the deal. No, it's, it's a case that this player's a strategic uh, he's got us, he got himself as much money as possible. He wanted a move like Chelsea. He didn't want to go to Newcastle, and the move eventually came for him, and he snapped his hands off it. So we have to accept it. We have to move on now. We have to get our next target in place. But yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Not too much news, but a bit of them bembo. Obviously, we've got all this stuff coming out. We're tossing out a bio, and I'm on top of that. A little bit on a business market, but other than that, not too much today. To be honest, so yeah. It's one of those ones, but I'm expecting things to flare up over the next week or so. We'll find out some big news. Enjoy the Champions League final tonight. I'm back in Dortmund, so hopefully they'll get the job done. If not, though, it'll be a great game regardless. It'll be, obviously, a vlog on the Tuesday morning from both of the England matches. So, again, we'll be at St. James' Park on Monday. Take care, though, guys. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.